about it, but he was on point. He predicted all this stuff with the migrant crisis. He, you know, his foreign policy. He wouldn't have a, a lot of things that happened with uh, Iran would never happen. Um, you know, with uh, and uh, probably would have avoided the whole situation with Israel. All this money we're giving away to Ukraine. You know, he's supported dropping out of NATO, which if he did that. Ukraine's not even in NATO. They just, you know, sort of kind of want to be. And if Trump was involved in president, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have gave it a second. Look, it was like, hey, man, that's your fight. You fight your own fight. We we don't, we're not the world's bodyguard. And you're not even paying us. So like, but we paying, we giving them money. I don't know, man. We like these decisions by this presidency is, is wild. Let's see what Trump has to say. That is the economy and the cost. Taylor 2024. <laughs> hey, you kind of late, bro. You got to, you know, you got to, I think you got to, you, you missed the deadline, my guy. We, we got a couple months, man. We got a couple months. Vice President. You missed the deadline, man. Hey, man. Hey, you probably would have got some votes now, too. And I ain't just saying for me. I'm saying like, Look at your competition. You know. Harris, you and President you Trump mean the future I won ago, already. Okay, buddy. <laughs> if that's the case, oh my God. I, I'm I'm scared to see what the fuck is going to happen in the next few years if that's the case. No offense. All right. But whoever wins this election, shit must have went left. Here tonight. Nigga, what? Then you were four years ago. When it... Come on, man! Don't 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 have don't don't have some something wrong. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Ruin the the reaction right now. So, don't don't mess with something wrong. All right, leave something wrong alone comes to the economy do you believe americans are better off than they were four years let her do her job in peace <laughs> so i something wrong raised as a middle class <laughs> that's her name that's my that's her name that's my tts assistant's name something wrong okay and i am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of america that's cap I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I... First of all, is that even a middle class anymore? After all, after COVID and all the policies, raising interest rates, making it hard for people to get loans and all this other stuff, they trying to fight inflation, but they they, they doing a, a pretty bad job at it, man. We, we getting our asses whooped by inflation. All right, let's keep it a band. I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Cuz here's the thing. But let, let's see what she got to say though. Let's see what her, her plans are. You know they probably bullshit. Most politicians words are, are hogwash, but let's see what they she got to say at least. Let's hear, let's hear her out. Let's hear her out. Let's hear this the serious. We know that we have a, a shortage of of homes and housing. And the cost of housing is too expensive for we have a build what I call an opportunity economy. Because here's the thing. We know that we have a, a shortage of, of homes and housing. And the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support. To Whose fault is that? Raise their children. And I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time so th that would be good if they could actually get it done that those young families can afford to buy a well unfortunately most of what they say is cap crib buy a because what happened what happened with the whole joe biden talking about getting rid of daylight savings nigga that's got to be the easiest thing to do still ain't do that shit and uh and what uh the whole Student loans thing, he now nah, he he did get a lot forgiven, but Supreme Court holding him back, man. If it was if it was President Trump, President Donnie, he would have kept going full speed ahead. Buy a car seat, buy clothes for their. Wait, yeah, let me keep children. going. My 
passion. One of them is small businesses. I was actually, my mother raised my sister and me, but there was a woman who helped raise us. We call her our second mother. She was a small business owner. I love our small businesses. My plan is to give a $50,000 tax deduction to start up small businesses, knowing they are part of the backbone of America's economy. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before, which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. My opponent has a plan that I... Is that what contributed to the deficit? I would have to look into that. I don't know, but that, I, I don't know. I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to... Is that true? I never heard of that. ...get through the month. Economists have said that that Trump sales tax would actually result for middle-class families in about $4,000 more a year because of his policies and his ideas about what should be the backs of middle class people paying for tax cuts for billionaires. President Trump, I'll give you two minutes. First of all, I have no sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows. Yeah, that, that's not, I, I've never heard of that. That sounds like that sounds like BS. That uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries, other sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows that uh, we're doing tariffs. Yeah, she got to know that. Other countries are going to finally after. 75 years pay us back for all that we've done for the world and the hey man foreign policy man i, I agree with that man we do a lot for the world and they, they don't really show no love in return tariff will be substantial in some cases i took in billions and billions of dollars as you know from china in fact they never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't it would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do they're taking in billions of dollars from China and other places. They've left the tariffs on. When I had it, I had tariffs, and yet I had no inflation. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy now that, because inflation has, which is really known as a. Now that, and, and from what I understand, is not a hundred percent true. The tariffs did lead to some sort of inflation for certain industries, like uh, the uh, the seafood industry in Maine fireworks a lot of stuff that was tariffed or uh, taxed on uh that he's put a tax on china to ship over to us china just ended up raising the price on us for those goods so we ended up as as the consumer ended up paying that tax essentially so yeah is that what she meant but that's not what she said though that's not what she said, but um, but it's not every industry, and inflation is, without a doubt, much worse now than it is than it was back in Trump's day. But he only had four years, so maybe it would have gotten way worse. Maybe these last four years was a result of what Trump did during his presidency. Questions, questions, questions. It's a country buster. It breaks up countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. We were at 21 percent, but that's being generous because many things are 50, 60, 70, and 80 percent higher than they were just a few years ago. This has been a disaster for people, for the middle class, but for every class. Is, is she, On top sh of that, is she we have shaking her head like that's not true? Hell yeah, that's true. People pouring into our country from prisons and jails from mental institutions and That's insane true. asylums and they're coming in and they're taking jobs that are occupied right now by african americans and hispanics and also unions unions are going to be affected very soon and you see what's happening you see what's happening with towns throughout the united states you look at He's springfield right, ohio you look at aurora in colorado they are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people That's that true. she That's true. and Biden led into our country, and they're destroying That's our true. country. They're That's true. That's uh, true. Hey, 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 he's spitting right now. He's spitting facts right now, yo. They're at the highest level of criminality. And you don't want to hear it, but he, he was saying this back in 2016, and it's true. It's true. It's true. It's what's happening can't be debated get out. we have to get them out fast i created one although this is a debate that can't de be debated that is happening 
of the greatest economies in the history of our country. I'll do it again and even better. We are going to get to immigration and border security. I think you got my vote, y'all. Border security during this debate, but uh, I would like to let Vice President Harris respond on the economy here. Well, I would love to. Let's talk. Respond. So she talks twice, he talks once. Talk about what Donald Trump left us. Donald Trump left us the worst unemployment since the Great Depression. That's due to COVID. Donald Trump That's not really fair. And I'm, I'm trying to be unbiased here. I'm trying to be unbiased. I'm just going based off of, like, it's just, it's common sense. You know, like, that, that's, that only happened because of uh, COVID. So that's, that's unfair. I always said that it was unfair to, uh, to judge Trump based off of a freak incident like COVID. Like, how, what the hell, what, what was he supposed to do about that? Trump left us the worst public health epidemic in a century. Donald Trump, uh, like he says, from China. So yeah, so it's kind of crazy how much she's bullshitting just early. It's just how many lies she's saying versus Trump, and a large portion of the media, which have you think the other way around, that Trump is the the bigger liar, and Democrats say nothing but truth, and. And I'm a, I'm, 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 uh, I'd say I'm an independent, but they don't never win. All right. But usually I lean Democrat usually, but I'm just keeping it a band right now. Just, I'm at the end of the day, I'm on the side of the truth and she's bullshit early. It's only seven minutes in, only a few minutes in. He's spitting nothing but facts and she's lying. Left us the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. That might be true. <laughs> that might be true. The whole, uh, I forget, insurrection. And what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. What we have done and what I intend to do. That was two lies and then truth. Do is build. Well, follow, I mean, after a whole bunch of bullshit, but uh, yeah on what we know are the aspirations and the hopes of the American people. But I'm going to tell you all in this debate tonight, you're going to hear from the same old tired playbook, a bunch of lies, grievances, and name calling. What you're going to hear tonight? Not so far. And honestly, this time around, this like presidential run, I've noticed he hasn't really been talking too crazy. Like he hasn't really been, he could, he could be going with, off way more, but like he's not really talking that crazy, which... It's a little surprising, just a little bit. Is a detailed and dangerous plan called Project 2025 that the former president intends on implementing if he were elected again. I believe very strongly that the American... He said he has no part to that, but... And also, I read the thing. It's not even... It's not that crazy. Like, it's all stuff that Republicans been saying for years now i don't agree with a lot of it but it's not like what they say like they don't support abortion they want to close borders uh th th etc and things like that bro like th that's what they've been saying their entire existence why is this whole project 2025 thing such a big deal i don't get it american people want a president who understands the importance of Maybe I got to look into it some more, but I don't get it, bro. Like, somebody please explain that to me. Of bringing us together, knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us, and I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. President Trump will give you a minute here to respond. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know. And okay, he gets a response. She knows better than anyone. I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad, but it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. Everybody knows what I'm going <laughs> to It's funny. He read it, but he's still he's still trying to, like, not offend nobody. He's like, hey, they came up with some good ideas, some good, some bad. Like, he's, he's still, like, he's still playing the fence, although he's not really winning the allegations war with this because she's just – throwing it on him the whole media is throwing it on him even though he swears he has nothing to do with it and i believe him because like that's it's it, it really just blew up on tiktok 
at the end of the day, like, if something blows up on TikTok, like, that don't mean, that don't make it true, you know what I'm saying? That don't mean that it, it's, like, necessarily tied to the, the potential president and former president. And also, from what I've looked into it, it's not even that fucking serious, y'all. I'm going to do cut taxes very substantially and create a great economy like I did before. We had the greatest economy. We got hit with a pandemic and the pandemic was not. Ain't no lie though. Under Trump, I paid more taxes. Like I paid, I never got a refund. Sure, my withholdings was lower, but I had to pay taxes at the end of the year. I still owe. Uh, actually, no, I might have paid them off recently. No, if the IRS is watching. Not since 1917 where 100 million people died. Has there been anything like it? We did a phenomenal. Just ignore that. Uh, ignore that. Good job with the pandemic. We handed them over a country where the economy and where the stock market was higher than it was before the pandemic came in. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. We made ventilators for the entire world. We got gowns. We got masks. We did things that nobody thought possible. And people give me credit for rebuilding the military. They give me credit for a lot of things but not enough credit for the great job we did with the pandemic. But the only jobs they got were bounce back jobs. These were jobs bounce back and it bounced back and it went to their benefit. But I was the one that created them. They know it and so does everybody else. Vice President. That's true. That's very true. Now Harris, I'll let you respond. So Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest huh? people. I am offering what I describe as an opportunity economy, and the best economists in our country, if not the world, have reviewed our relative plans for the future of America. I want to know about these tax breaks for the wealthy, man, because if they if that's not what they've been doing the last four years, because everybody. You know, all these jobs, not even really even hiring like that. Maybe these tax breaks, I don't know. I don't know. I got to look into it some more. But if these tax breaks lead to more people getting jobs, hey, maybe maybe we got to say fuck it, okay? I don't know. Because I don't know what the hell they've been doing about these damn tax breaks for the wealthy. Probably nothing. Have the wealthy been paying more taxes under Biden? I think so, but I don't remember. What I said is that Donald Trump. Like, I don't know. I think that's something he planned, but I don't know if it ever passed. I wouldn't know. I'm broke. His plan would make the economy worse. Mine would strengthen the economy. What the Wharton School has said is Donald Trump's plan would actually explode the deficit. 16 Nobel laureates have described his economic plan as something. I don't. I wouldn't take their word for it. There's plenty of smart people who be capping, uh, you know, and based upon who's asking them to look into those specific questions. But I would have to look into it myself and see what they say and why they say it. Something that would increase inflation and by the middle of next year would invite a recession. You just have to look at where we are. Oh my God, that sounds like cap. Uh, it just sounds like some exaggeration. Because uh, they've been talking about there's a recession coming for like a year now. And then it feels like we're in a recession or felt like it or it still feels like it for most people. And, but they swear it's not one. So even though a lot of people I know losing jobs, not working. Yeah, I, I that sounds like some exaggeration. We right are there. and where we stand on the issues. And I'd invite you to know that Donald Trump actually has no plan for you because he is more interested in defending himself than he is in looking out for you. It's just a sound bite. They gave her that to say. Look, <laughs> I went to the Wharton School of Finance, and many of those professors, the top professors, think my plan is a brilliant plan. It's a great plan. It's a plan that... See, they go on band for band with, with financial experts. It's going to bring up our, our worth, our value as a country. It's going to make people want to be able to go and work and... Uh, create jobs and create a lot of good, solid money for our comp for our country. And just to finish off, uh, she doesn't have a plan. She copied uh, he, he, Biden's <laughs> plan, and it's that's kind of funny. It was almost a a, a Freudian slip there. He almost said, uh, "Be good for our company." <laughs>
Uh, but he's a former businessman, so he's probably used to saying that. But uh, it might have might have been a little slip up. Like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, <laughs> we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. Mr. President, I do want to drill down on something you both brought up. Uh, the vice president of your tariffs. You I ain't gonna lie. Let's he might be right about that because she just be saying the same shit. <laughs> she be saying the same shit. <laughs> Bro, he's way more detailed than everything he's trying to do. But her, she just be saying the same shit. That's funny. Yes, because your plan is what she calls is essentially a national sales tax. Your proposal calls for tariffs, as you pointed out here, on foreign imports across the board. You recently said that you might double your plan, imposing tariffs up to 20% on goods coming into this country. As you know, many economists say that with tariffs at that level, costs are then passed on to the consumer. Vice President Harris has argued it'll mean higher prices on gas, food, clothing, medication, arguing it costs the typical family nearly $4,000 a year. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? They're not going to have higher prices. What's going to have and who's going to have higher prices is China and all of the countries that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever. China was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars, and so were other countries. And, you know, if she doesn't like them. But I see, like I said earlier, they, like, he increased those taxes on China, but China increased those goods to pay for those increased taxes. So it ended up being the American people, the consumer, that ended up footing the bill for those tax raises. So, yeah. And that's for a lot of goods. I don't know about all of them, but still a good chunk of them and i don't if i was trying to i don't see why i would just charge more on some goods and not all of them if they if we're going uh doing a basically a, a, t a tax war a tariff war they should have gone out and they should have immediately cut the tariffs but those tariffs are there three and a half years now under their administration see and and that's another thing another good comeback he could keep going back to it's like hey if you talking so much crap about all my policies and everything I did, why didn't you undo it in the past four years when you had a chance, when you was in, in, in charge? And they're not going to really have an answer. We are going to take in billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. They had the highest inflation perhaps in the history of our country because I've never seen a worse period of time. People can't go out and buy cereal or bacon or eggs or anything He's not else. lying. He's telling He's the truth. The He's telling the truth. People of our country are absolutely dying with what they've done. They've destroyed the economy. He's telling the truth. All you have to do is look at a poll. The polls say 80 and 85 and even 90 percent that the Trump economy was great, that their economy was terrible. Vice President. He ain't lying. Most people would say that. There's more to it than that, though, because it's not just America that's dealing with this. This is a whole worldwide thing. It's more of a post-COVID thing. But pol their policies have made it worse in a lot of ways. This migrant crisis making things worse. Them sending money to all these foreign countries rather than spending it here, making it worse. So a lot of their decisions are just making it the, a bad situation worse. President Harris, I do want to ask for your response. And you heard what the president said there, because the Biden administration did keep uh, a number of the Trump tariffs in place. So how do you respond? Well, let's be clear that the Trump administration resulted... Oh, let, 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 let's hear this. Let's hear this. Let's run, run, rewind it back. Let's hear this answer. Let's hear this cap. In place. So how do you respond? Well, let's be clear that the Trump administration resulted in a trade deficit, one of the highest we've ever seen in the history of America. He invited trade wars. You want to talk about his deal with China. What he ended up doing is under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling America. Uh, the question the man asked is why didn't you change all those things that you're talking shit about? In chips. In the past four years. To China. To help them improve and modernize their military. Basically sold us out. When a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America, like, what was that? when a policy and modernize their military to China presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military, basically sold us out.
when a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America wins the competition for the 21st century, which means focusing on the details of what that requires, focusing on relationships with our allies, focusing on investing in American-based technology so that we win the race on AI, on quantum computing, focusing on what we need to do to support America's workforce so that we don't end up having, the, the, on the short end of the stick, in terms of workers' rights. But what Donald Trump did, let's talk about this, with COVID, is he actually t thanked President Xi for what he did during COVID. Look at his tweet. Thank you, President Xi, exclamation point, when we know that Xi was responsible for lacking and not giving us transparency about the origins of COVID. President Trump, I'll let you respond. First of all, they bought their <laughs> chips from Taiwan. Yeah, I was thinking that too. They was buying the chips from Taiwan, but also, the how she gonna say? Hold on, what she say? How she gonna say that? Cause, Origins of COVID. President Trump. Cause he, oh my God, ain't no way, bro. They they really think we're retarded, bro. All right, you know what? I think this is making me want to vote for Trump even more. Cause she really blamed him. Lacking and not giving us transparency about the. She said. Nah, I can't lie. That is the wildest thing I heard. Oh my god, that kind of hurts my brain. Oh my god, hold on. Run this back. Hear what she just that said. She was responsible for lacking and she said when we know that she was responsible. She said, "Why didn't you um basically go after China more for knowing the origin of COVID?" The the man was calling it the China flu for for years since it dropped since it came out it came from China that's how that's what he was saying and everybody was like oh he being rude he being racist for lack and now they now she trying to make it seem like oh he wasn't even putting no pressure on him like he, oh he was all oh my god this is this is crazy cuz really Donald Trump was beefing with China heavy like he kicked they're they're uh, the diplomats out the country. He's the reason why we ha we got fake static with China right now. While the tensions are you high send how with China. Now they update it. Nah, I didn't. I didn't see how kick looks right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out though. I'm gonna check it out. Lacking and not. But we we having a this is a more mature stream right now execution Just stay stay tuned man i know my my politics like that a little bit all right stay tuned all right i'm gonna i'm gonna make this simple for everybody to understand and we're gonna be talking shit and making jokes at the same time not giving us transparency about the origins of covid president trump i'll let you respond first of all they bought their chips from taiwan we hardly make yeah i they, yeah they, we don't even make chips like that he's right most most of the world get their chips from Taiwan, damn near, or in China. So I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they yeah, have. That's I true. don't say her because she has no policy. Everything <laughs> that she <laughs> believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to say. That's facts. That's facts. He's he's not lying. That's what he was. You know, what the under a MAGA hat. She's gone to my. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga funny. See, she isn't even laughing, bro. This nigga funny, bro. If she ever got elected, she'd change it. She we years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. She's gone to my <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> if she ever got elected, she'd change it, and it will be the end of our country. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics, and he taught her well. But when you look at what she's done to our country, and when you look at these millions and millions of people that are pouring into our country monthly, where it's, I believe, 21 million people, not the 15 that people say, and I think it's a lot higher than the 21, that's bigger than New York State pouring in. And just look at what they're doing to our country. They're criminal. Hey, I believe that, yo, because there's a lot of migrants out here, yo. And they, not just in New York, they're all over. Many of these people coming in are criminals, and that's bad for. And it's not like a little bit; it's it's a it's a lot, bro. For our economy too. You know, you mentioned before we'll talk about immigration later. That's just the ones I've seen. There's plenty of that I haven't seen. 
Well, bad immigration is the worst thing that can happen to our economy. They have, and she has, that destroyed is true. our country with... That is largely true. Not 100%, but like 80, 90% true. Policy that's insane. From what I know. Almost policy that you'd say they have to hate our country. President Trump, thank you. Lindsay? I want to turn to the issue of abortion. President Trump, you've often touted that you were able to kill Roe v. Wade. Last year, you said that you were proud to be the most pro-life president in American history. Then last month, you said that your administration would be great for women and their reproductive and she faked tough. rights in your home state of Florida. You surprised many uh, with regard to your six week abortion ban because you initially had said that it was too short. And you said, quote, I'm going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. But then the very next day, you reverse course and said you would vote to support the six week ban. Vice President Harris says that women should. Well, if I if I uh, well, he said that it's only the only reason he did that is because um he only had it was the lesser of two evils it's either it's the six weeks or the nine month or even yeah the nine month uh one which is basically a full grown baby so if you're gonna choose one you gotta do the ban at six weeks rather than making it okay to kill a, a damn near a full grown baby which is probably what he's about to say shouldn't trust you on the issue of, of abortion because you've changed your position so many times. Therefore, why should they trust you? Well, the reason I'm doing that vote is because the plan is, as you know, the vote is they have abortion in the ninth month. They even have, and you can look yep. at the governor See? of West Virginia, the previous right governor there. of West Virginia. Y'all following the right person right now. Job, if y'all watching this, you're watching the, the right guy. Before, I'm he trying to tell you, I, I know, I know this stuff. And we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. And that's why I did that, because Basically. that predominates. Because they're radical. The Democrats are radical in that. And her vice presidential pick, which I think was a horrible pick, by the way, for our country, because he is really out of it. But her vice presidential pick says abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born is okay. And that's not okay with me, hence the vote. I don't but know I if that's true, but I gotta look into it. 52 years they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. And through the uh, genius and, and heart and strength of six Supreme Court justices, we were able to do that. Now, I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I believe strongly in it. Ronald Reagan did also. 85% of Republicans do exceptions. Very important. But we were... Hey, he's standing on business on that. I got to give him credit because that's a, a hot topic and, uh, uh, for conservatives and Republicans and kind of make him look bad or he kind of put him in a tough spot. You know, when it comes to his position on that. So him saying that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Y'all category he, say I, I, L. A word? Uh, yeah, I should probably fix that. <laughs> Appreciate you, Christo. Good man right there. But um, let me see here. Um, and what was I saying? Something about... Uh, you know what, let me just keep going, keep watching. We were able to get it, and now states are voting on it. And for the first time, you're going to see, look, this is a, an issue that's torn our country apart for 52 years. Every legal scholar, every Democrat, every Republican, liberal, conservative, they all wanted this issue to be brought back to the states where the people could vote. And that's what happened. Happened. Now, Ohio, I kind of agree with that. The vote was somewhat... I kind of agree with that. It's it's not necessarily uh, making or uh, banning abortion. It's just giving states the right to choose, and that's kind of whole the whole basis of America is states' rights over the country, you know, and which also goes all you know in line with what Repu most Republicans believe. You can still have an abortion in this country even with uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned. So I don't see why it's such a big deal. It's just giving more power back to the states, which is the whole uh, motto of Republicans. 
somewhat liberal. Kansas, the vote was somewhat liberal, much more liberal than people would have thought. But each individual state is voting. It's the vote of the people now. It's not tied up in the federal government. I did a great service in doing it. It took courage to do it. And the Supreme Court had great... Wait, Christo, what you watching on? You're not on kick? ...courage in doing it. And I give tremendous credit to those six justices. Why don't I see your chats on, on kick? But whatever. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response to President Trump. Well, as I said, you're going to hear a bunch of lies, and that's not actually a surprising fact. Let's oh, never mind. I see it. I don't know why that wasn't shown before. understand how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court. Yeah, I, I also, yeah, I... I said that too. I'm pretty sure this, that's not a thing, like killing a baby after it's born. But the whole nine month abortion thing, I'm pretty sure that's true. Pretty sure that's true. Supreme Court, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now, in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care in one state it provides prison for life trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest which understand what that means a survivor Wait, what? of a crime of violation to did she just say nurse to provide didn't he just say that he he believes in those exceptions what is she talking about care in one state it provides prison for life Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape. And she said Trump abortion bans, which make no exceptions for those things. So is he capping? Is he capping right now? Is he, did he say he has those exceptions, but just actually doesn't? Rape and incest. Which understand what that means. A survivor of a crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. I think we already knew, understood what that meant, but okay, she's trying to drive the point home. And one does not have to abandon their faith Let her cook. or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government, and Donald Trump certainly, should not be telling a woman what to do with... Oh, oh, she, she's talking with more veracity. She's trying to appeal to the emotions of women, trying to get women on her side as far as abortion goes. Her body. Which I'm pretty sure that she already had to support um but whatever. i have talked with women around our country you want to talk about this is what people wanted pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term suffering from a miscarriage being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot she didn't want that her husband didn't want that a 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest being forced to carry a pregnancy to term? They don't want that. And I've pledged to you, when Congress passes a bill to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. But understand, if Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. Understand, in his project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies, your miscarriages. I think the American people believe that certain freedoms, in particular the freedom to make decisions about one's own body, should not be made by the government. Thank you, Vice President Harris. Well, there uh, she goes again. It's a lie. I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban, because we've gotten what everybody wanted, Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, and every legal scholar wanted it to be brought back into the states. And the states are voting, and it may take a little time, but for 52 years, this issue has torn our country apart, and they've wanted it back in the states. And I did something that nobody thought was possible. The states are now voting. What she says is an absolute lie. And as far as the abortion ban... Which, by the way, I felt the same way about it at the time Roe v. Wade got overturned when I looked more into it. It's just all it did was give states more rights to, to make their own decision whether they 
want to allow abortion or not, which, you know, oh, shoot, I just realized it's September 11th. Ben, no, I'm not in favor of abortion, ban, but it doesn't matter because this issue has now been taken over by the states. Would you veto a na national abortion ban if it came Well, to I won't desk? have to because, again, uh, two things. Number one. Wait, what was the question? Would he veto a national abortion ban? I mean, it's, it's up to the states. Why? Why would he need to? That's kind of that kind of goes against the whole, like the whole reason for America. The the whole reason America was created. Well, a big portion of it, not the whole reason, but a big part of the Constitution and, and the you know, the four fathers, you know, that vision was to give states more rights and not have the the federal government tell what the states to do one she said she'll go back to congress she'll never get the vote it's impossible for her to get the vote uh, especially now with the 50 50 and essentially 50 50 in both senate and the house she's not going to get the vote she can't get the vote she won't even come close to it so it's just talk you know what it reminds me of when they said they're going to get student loans uh, terminated and it ended up being so a yeah vote. i was uh, <laughs> i was talking about that earlier yeah, that didn't work out too well. Total catastrophe. The student loans, and then her, I, I think probably her boss, if you call him a boss, he spends all his time on the beach. But look, her boss went out <laughs> and said, we'll do it again, we'll do it a different way. And he went out, got rejected again by the Supreme Court. So all these students got uh, taunted with this whole thing about this whole idea. And how unfair that would have been, part of the reason they lost to the millions and millions of people that had to pay off their student loans. They didn't get it for free. But they were saying it's the same way that they talked about that, that they talk about abortion. But if I could just get a yes or no, because your running mate, J J.D. Vance, has said that you would veto if it did come to your desk. Well, I didn't discuss it with uh, J.D. In all fairness, uh, J.D., uh, and I, I don't mind if he has a certain view, but I think he was speaking for me, but I really didn't. Look. We don't have to discuss it because she'd never be able to get it, just like she couldn't get student loans. They couldn't get student loans. They didn't even come close to getting student loans. They taunted they young people and a lot of other people that had loans. They can never Some people got it forgiven. So it doesn't matter what she says about going to Congress. Well, wonderful. Let's go to Congress. Do it. But the fact is that for years they wanted to get it out of Congress and out of the federal government, and we did something that everybody said couldn't be done. And now you have a vote of the people on abortion. A Vice President Harris, I want to give you your time to respond, but I do want to ask, would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. And understand what has been happening under Donald Trump's abortion bans. Couples who pray and, 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 and dream of having a family are being denied IVF treatments. What is happening in our country? Working people, working women, Ironically, I'm pretty sure he supports IVF. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he does. In one or two jobs who can barely afford childcare as it is, have to travel to another state to get on a plane sitting next to strangers to go and get the health care she needs, barely can afford to do it, and what you are putting her through is unconscionable. I don't know. I think she's playing it up with this with this voice cracking and sentimental tone. And the people of decent strategy, but America have not the, the majority of Americans believe in a woman's right to make decisions about her own body, and that is why in every state where this issue has been on the ballot in red and blue states both, the people of America have voted for freedom. Vice President Excuse Harris, me, I have you. to respond. Another lie. It's another lie. I have been a leader on IVF, which, which is fertilization. Uh, see, IVF, see? I have been a leader. Bro, I am on the money. All right, somebody, yo, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I can talk politics on here, too, now. Come on. When Come on, sport, if you want some sports talk, you know, a Supreme sort sports talk, come here.
If you want some supreme politics talk, come in. If you want some supreme jokes and last reactions, come in. They got a very negative decision on IVF from the Alabama court. Subscribe. Give me some clout, goddammit. I saw the people of Alabama and the legislature two days later voted it in. I've been a leader on it. They know that, and everybody else knows it. I have been a leader on fertilization, IVF. And the other thing, they, you should ask, will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? Come on. Okay, would you do that? Why don't you ask why, her that question? Why don't you answer That's the, the problem. question? Would you oh, he got her. That's kind of crazy. She did not answer that question. Oh, shit. She tried to respond to his question with a question. Talk about, why don't you answer the question? He, he kind of did answer the question. Answer the question you with could, your veto. You could do abortions in the seventh month, the eighth month, the ninth month. Oh, she said with the veto. But still, like, yeah, he, he didn't answer that question. But he was right, though. Like, he it wouldn't really matter. And even if he did veto it, it's still up to states. Like, it's still not banning abortion. What's what, what up? Not true. And probably after birth. Well, it's not banning a, a abortion in the country. It's just banning it in certain states that want to ban abortion in that state. Just look at the governor, former governor of, of Virginia. The governor of Virginia said we put the baby aside and then we determine what we want to do with the baby. President Trump, thank you. We're going to turn now to immigration and border security. We know it's an issue that's important to Republicans, Democrats, voters across the board uh, in this country. Vice President Harris, you were tasked by President Biden with getting to the root causes of migration from Central America. We know that illegal border crossings reached a record high in the Biden uh -oh. administration. Here, this here past June. They come to tough questions for her. President Biden imposed tough new asylum restrictions. We know the numbers since then have dropped significantly. But my question to you tonight is why did the administration wait until that six thing? months before the election to I act? ain't noticed. And would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the Ooh, only person on this. Tough. That was a good tough question. Like why did he wait six months till six months before the election to put restrictions on the migrant crisis? Who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the traffic United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States? Yeah, what the fuck? It is good. Traffic United States Congress, who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations what the for hell? the traffic United States Congress, including some skip. of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came up with a border security bill which I supported. Whoa, hold on. Why did Skip? It's y'all seen that, right? That's Skip. This is a, the CNN broadcast. Hour and forty four minutes, but hour and forty five forty five minutes, but it's Skip just now. And came up with a border Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States. On the tough question for met for Kamala Harris, did y'all see that? Came up with a border security bill. Most transnational criminal organizations. For the traffic United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States, Sus. came up with I may a go somewhere else security watch this. bill, which I supported. And that bill would have put 1,500 more border agents on the border to help those folks who are working there right now overtime trying to do their job. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States. I know there are so many families watching tonight who have been personally affected by the surge of fentanyl in our country. That bill would have put more resources to allow us to prosecute transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. But you know what happened to that bill? Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you know why? Because he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And mm. understand, this Is that true? at a time I Where think that might the be true. People of our country actually need a leader who engages in solutions, who actually addresses the problems <laughs> at hand. But what we have in the former president is someone who would prefer to run on a problem instead of. That's crazy. I think that might be true. Fixing a problem. And I'll tell you something. He's going to talk about immigration a lot tonight, even when it's not the subject that is being raised. And I'm going to actually do something. Hey, really tough new. question, but hey, I ain't going to lie. She, she kind of handles that question pretty well. If, if what she said is true about the him calling Congress, I'm pretty sure that happened. To attend one of Donald Trump's rallies, because it's a really interesting thing to watch. 
You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies what? early out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your need, and your desires. That's cat. That's cat. And I'll tell you, I believe you deserve a pre I've seen his rallies. They're very entertaining, all right? And he does talk about the American people a lot. So that's kind of cat. President who actually puts you first, and I pledge to you that I will. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump, on that point, I want to get your response. Well, I would like to respond. Let me just ask. I don't know. Yeah, just to... Uh, yeah, his whole motto is America first. And if you ask me, it's kind of the reverse because oh, with these people who have been in charge the last few years, which includes Kamala Harris, they've been putting other countries first, giving them money for, for wars and allowing them to cross the border without any issues whatsoever. And she's spinning it back on him as if he's the one who doesn't care about America or the American people. I can't, I think just looking at actions, I think it's the reverse. Sesto, why did you try to kill that bill and successfully so that would have put thousands of additional agents and officers on the border? President, I'm pretty sure that happened. Responders to the rallies. Thanks. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. <laughs> And the people that do go, <laughs> she's bussing them in and paying them to be there. Yeah. And then showing them in a different light. So Bro. she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. No, the funny. biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics, that's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's Get happening the fuck out of here, country. bro. Is that true? That's crazy. I, I believe him. That's just so crazy not to be true. I believe him. And it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase. Make America great again. What the fuck? What's going on? What happened? They froze, bro. What's up with this CNN? Hold on, man. What what the f what's going on, bro? Let me skip ahead. Wait, what? Why the pause? That killed people. That burned. Dating people up. Name calling. To having a oh, friend. Oh, it really just paused. The United States Supreme Court. Man, you wouldn't even think this was CNN, you know. How I pause for like 10 minutes? Someone who has openly abused and this is. Oh, he's probably chewing her ass up. The former president would essentially be immune from any misconduct if he were to enter the White House. We know now the court won't stop him. We know J.D. Vance is not going to stop him. It's up to the American people Vice to President stop Harris, him. Thank you. Lindsay? Vice President this Harris, in your last run for president. We got this is the one that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. I probably Wait, I wanted to pause. I'm going to go back there. A lot there. of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. 
A lot of towns it's about 30 minutes in. Get rid of that. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being rallies are concerned as far as the reason they go is them that live there. And this is they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. Jesus Christ, and it's bro. a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase, make America great again. She's destroying this country. And if she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. Not only success, we'll end up being Venezuela on steroids. I just want to clarify here. You bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio. Honestly, bro, he's been right so far. I'm terrified if he doesn't become president, what is going to happen, bro? I ain't going to lie, bro. It, which is so ironic, bro. I thought him being president was going to ruin this country. Boy, was it the reverse. Holy shit. And ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there had been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals. Oh, is that true? Oh, well. Within the immigrant community. Well, all I've this. seen people on television. Let me just say here, this is the... the people on television say my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people I'm on taking television are saying the their dog was eaten by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. <laughs> you talk about extreme. I wonder if that's true. Uh, you know, I, this is, I think, one of the reasons why in this election I actually have the endorsement of 200 Republicans who have formally worked with President Bush, Mitt Romney, and John McCain, including the endorsement of former Vice President Dick Cheney and Congress member. Liz Cheney, and if you want to really know the inside track on who the former president is, if he didn't make it clear already, just ask people who have worked with him. His former chief of staff, a four-star general, has said he has contempt for the Constitution point. of the United States. Got a good point. Got a good point right there. A lot of people who work with him got bad things to say about him. That's one of the reasons why I didn't support him before. And didn't vote for him. Thought he was going to be a, a bad thing for this country. They really are giving us the worst of. Uh, we ha we have to pick the who we think will be the lesser of two evils. Unfortunately, that's just what we've come down to. Ugh, oh my God. States. His former national security. And thanks for the like. Whoever else liked uh, the video, appreciate you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Help me get to my next thousand subscribers ASAP. If you're watching, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, give me some clout. Uh, I really appreciate it. Security advisor has said he is dangerous and. Go ahead and follow me on my other platforms on, on the top of the screen as well. I uh, appreciate y'all. Unfit. His former Secretary of Defense has said the nation, the Republic, would never survive another Trump term. And when we listen. To this kind of rhetoric, we barely surviving now on the Biden. Affect the American people are not or being addressed. Kamala Harris, whoever the hell's in charge. I think the choice is clear in this election. President Trump, I'll give you a quick minute to respond. Yeah, here. Uh, thank you. Because when I hear that, see, I'm a different kind of a person. I fired most of those people, not so graciously. They did bad things or a bad job. I fired them. They never fired one person. They didn't fire anybody having to do with that. Take a guy like Esper. He was no good. I fired him. So he writes a book. Another one writes a book. Because with me, they can write books. With nobody else, can they? <laughs> but they have done such a poor job, and they never fire anybody. Look at the economy. Look, how, look at the inflation. They didn't fire any of their economists. They have the same people. That's a good way not to have books written about you. But just to finish, I got more votes than any Republican in history by far. 
In fact, I got more votes than any president, sitting president, in history by far. Let me continue on immigration. It was what you wanted to talk about earlier, so let's get back to your deportation uh, uh, proposal that the vice president has reacted to as well. Uh, president Trump, you call this the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. You say you would use the National Guard. You say if things get out of control, you'd have uh, no problem using the U.S. With military. Local police, yes. uh, you also said you would use local police. Uh, how would you uh, deport 11 million undocumented immigrants? I know you, you believe that number I is much higher. Uh, take us through this. What does this look like? Will authorities be going door to door in this country? Yeah, it is much higher because of them. They allowed criminals, many, many millions of criminals. They allowed terrorists. They allowed common street criminals. They I mean, allowed the people to come in, drug dealers, to come into our country. And then now in the... I mean, if the known number is 11 million, there's got to be an unknown number because not everybody who's crossing that border is you know, reaching out to let people know that they're here and be like, hey, y'all didn't include me in the, in the uh, 11 million uh, migrant count. So it's, it's, it has most likely more than 11 million. The United States and told by their countries like Venezuela. Now, if it's 21 million, I don't know about that. I don't know where he getting that number from. I don't know how would anybody would even know. But yeah. Venezuela, don't ever come back or we're going to kill you. Do you know that crime in Venezuela and crime in countries all over the world is way down? You know why? because they've taken their criminals off the street and they've given them to her to put into our country. <laughs> and this will be yeah, one of the true, greatest bro. mistakes that's in crazy. history for them to allow. And I think they probably did it because they think they're gonna get votes, but it's not worth it because they're, they're destroying the fabric of our country. Yeah, a friend told me recently, El Salvador, their crime went way down. But that's because you know their president's tough on crime. And I'm not sure, I don't think it, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with, uh, you know, just sending their criminals to America, but it could, it very well could. Country by what they've done. There's never been anything done like this at all. They've destroyed the fabric. That could be a portion of it. Of our country. Millions of people let in and all over the world, crime is down all over the world, except here. Crime here is up and through the roof, despite their fraudulent statements that they made. Crime in this country is through the roof, and we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime, and it's happening at levels that nobody thought possible. President Trump, as you know, the FBI says overall violent crime is actually coming down in this country. But Excuse Vice President me, the Harris, FBI defraud, the they were defrauding statements. They, they didn't include the worst cities. They didn't include the cities with the worst crime. It was a, a fraud, just like their number of 818,000 jobs that they said they created turned out to be a fraud. Pre True, all true. Actual assault and his next letter cook next big <laughs> court appearance is in November at his own criminal sentencing. And let's be clear. Yikes. Where each person stands on the issue of what is important about respect for the rule of law and respect for law enforcement. The former <laughs> vice president called for defunding federal law enforcement, forty five thousand agents. Get this on the day after he was arraigned on 34 felony counts. So let's talk about what is important in this race. It is important that we move forward, that we turn the page on this same old tired rhetoric and address the needs of the American people, address what we need to do about the housing shortage, which I have a plan for, address what we must do to support our small businesses, address bringing down the price of groceries, Frankly, the American people are exhausted with this same old tired playbook. Vice President Harris, thank you. Excuse me. Every one of those cases was started by them against their political opponent. And I'm winning most of them, and I will win the rest on appeal. And you saw that with the decision that came down just recently from the Supreme Court. I'm winning most of them. But those are cases, it's called weaponization. Never happened in this country. They weaponized the justice. It's, uh, it's kind of true, kind of true. Justice Department. Every, Let them cook. Every one of those cases was involved with the DOJ, from Atlanta and Fawny Willis to, to the 
uh, Attorney General of New York and the DA in New York, every one of those cases. And then they say, oh, he was — he's a criminal. They're the ones that made them go after me. By the way, Joe Biden was found essentially guilty on the documents case. And what happened in my documents case? They said, oh, that's the toughest of them all. A complete and total victory. Two months ago, it was thrown out. It's weaponization, and they used it, and it's never happened in this country. They used it to try and win an election. President They're Trump. fake cases. President Trump, thank you. A really quick response here, Vice President Harris, on this notion of weaponization of the Justice Department. Well, let's talk about extreme and understand the context in which this election in 2024 is taking place. The United States Supreme Court recently ruled that the former president would essentially be immune from any misconduct if he were to enter the White House again. Understand, this is someone who has openly said he would terminate, I'm quoting, terminate the con Well, specifically as any any president, not just him. So if they wanted to do crimes, they would be uh, basically unable to get convicted as well, which is probably why Joe Biden called a hit on a— No, 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 never mind, never mind. I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> Constitution of the— Got his ear. Wait, which, by the way, what, what, how is his ear now? What, what, what is, the ear looks fine to me. What it would mean if Donald Trump were back in the White House with no guardrails, because certainly we know now the court won't stop him. We know J.D. Vance is not going to stop him. It's up to the American people. Vice President to stop Harris, him. thank you. Lindsay? Vice President Harris, in your last run for president. We got this is the one that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was about to say what I was just saying or about to say. The threat to democracy President with a fake Trump. Russia, Russia, Russia investigation we do have a lot that to get went to. nowhere. We have a lot to get to. Lindsay? Vice President Harris, in your last run for president, you said you wanted to ban fracking. Now you don't. You wanted mandatory government buyback programs for assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border crossings. Now Shit. She getting out of tough question. Now you're taking a harder line. I know you say that your values have not changed. So then why have Cap. so many of your policy positions changed? So my values have not changed and I'm going to... Nah, that's wild. She that she really came for her. point that, that you've made. Crazy. My value changed. So then assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border programs for assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border crossings. Now you're taking a harder line. I know you say that your values have not changed. So then why have so many of your policy positions changed? So my values have not changed, and I'm going to discuss every one of the, at least every point that you've made. But in particular, let's talk about fracking because we're here in Pennsylvania. I made that very clear in 2020. I will not ban fracking. I have not banned fracking as Vice President of the United States. And in fact, I was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which opened new leases for fracking. My position is that we have got to invest in diverse sources of energy so we reduce our reliance on foreign oil. We have had the largest increase in domestic oil production in history because of an approach that recognizes that we cannot over rely on foreign oil. As it relates to my values, let me tell you, I grew up a middle class kid raised by a hardworking mother who worked and saved and was able to buy our first home when I was a teenager. The values I bring to the importance of home ownership, knowing not everybody got handed $400 million on a silver platter and then filed bankruptcy six times, is a value that I bring to my work to say we are going to work with the private sector and home builders to increase 3 million homes, increase by 3 million homes by the end of my first term.